Hey, my name is Brandon Seabrook Nelson. I am a coffee roaster here at Bridge City Coffee in Greenville, South Carolina. I am a spoken word poet and also a visual artist. How did you get into art? You said you're a spoken word and visual artist. You've had stuff in the zine like a number of times. Yeah, I yeah, thank you for that invitation as well. It's been really cool. Um, yeah, your stuff is amazing. Like even, even just looking back on your Instagram, like the stuff that you posted two years ago as well, like your, your sketches are so mm -hmm. amazing. I love, I love your style. Thank you. Uh, it's still progressing. Um, so regarding the art, I've been drawing since I was a little kid and it started with Ninja Turtles mostly. My mom used to paint me Ninja Turtles like watercolor and then I think she did one of Batman as far as like the symbol, Batman symbol. But I did not take it seriously. It was just a hobby for me. And I didn't take art in high school at all. So I still regret it to this day. But I went to North Greenville College in 2002 and I started like a youth ministry major. So I almost finished that. And then I did this one drawing of Sunny of POD one day for just some random art contest at school. And I took it to Jim Crab and he pretty much said it sucked. So <laughs> um, he, not exact words, I paraphrased it, but <laughs> um, he brought me back into drawing class. And that's where I started to develop more of this craft that I've been given. Um, and I dropped that youth ministry major in one day when I was close to finishing four years worth of it. And so I dropped that one day and decided to pursue this gift and got my associate's degree in 2007 because North Greenville did not have a four-year art degree at the time. So I went back in 2008 and decided to pursue again a BA in art because we finally got a four-year art degree. And I took the youth ministry major and I was gonna do a double major at first when I went back in to finish whatever I had left. I decided to take that and make it a minor and pursued art. Got my bachelor's in arts in 2010. And uh, yeah, I've been developing technique and skills since then. It's been, it's been a really cool progress to see and not putting myself inside a box anymore. Like I know my influences, of course, but also what else can I develop? What else can come out of me that people wouldn't see? Yeah. That's, that's brilliant. I really love what you have on your Instagram that says like you're created to create. And I love how you, how you just said that you decided to like develop that gift. Cause I feel like for, I feel like in, in the world of art or maybe, maybe more like in the broader world, like typical like society looks at artists as like, it's not a real thing. It's not something to pursue. It's just something to do on the side. But I love how you recognize that as a gift within okay. yourself and allowed yourself to develop that. Like that takes guts. <laughs> that takes it does. Um, that actually the rhyme scheme of it was on purpose um, that we created to create. We created a lot of people see reality and resonate, but also that incorporates my faith. Um, I think also it was rewarding to listen to people's stories when they see my art or just learn something new. So the things that you've seen, I'm learning myself slowly um, or may have learned within a day or two of a person and just wanted to implement that, that stood out to me. Um, but also that was actually challenged to me by a, a good friend of mine who was a pillar in my life named Jason Crosby. I used to work with that Starbucks for a very long time. And he told me, I want you to create a life mission statement for yourself. Mm. Next day I had it. And it was that mission statement that you've seen on Instagram. So I had it for over five years, just that life mission statement by itself. And that's what my art is because I know I have something to share and I want to help. Um, I want to help people think about the possibilities of something they may not believe in, but also just to share something they may have a story to. So it's not just me throwing stuff on canvas and here you go, here's some artwork. It's me much more of putting my soul into it and for people to see that. That's why, that's where it comes in with the spoken word. Because I started writing poetry when I was uh, early 30s and it just developed more and more and more. But my influence does come from hip hop because of words. 
So I just started mixing that with the visual because that's pretty much my art statement in itself. And it makes more sense to me instead of me just sharing it over and over again, repetitive. <laughs> it just saves a lot of words coming out of my mouth and, you know, dry throat. <laughs> so I decided to um, just write poetry with it and that way it gets people to think about it as well. So I get to display both talents and it helps. Yeah, yeah that's brilliant. And I think the, your, your words and your visuals go together so well and they complement each other. And the thing that I love as well is, I think you said one time, like a couple, a couple times ago when you had something in the, in the zine, I think I asked like, well, what does this mean? And your, your response was like, it means what you interpret it to mean. Yeah, I've been told that from an old art teacher that leave room for interpretation because what you say, you know what your truth is. But at the same time, people want to take something out of it that may not be what you want it to be. So I'm not coming very direct at it. It's much more of leave room for interpretation. And that's just, I think that's any artist, they should be doing that. Yeah. Is there... Is there anything you try to convey specifically with your art, with either spoken word or visual art? Like what are your, what are your, obviously your mission statement is what you said yeah. on your Instagram page. Um, uh, if I convey something, say for example, you've probably seen this one is the one of Mary Magdalene. It's the one with the adulteress written on her forehead. Yeah. So that piece was actually taken from an old Renaissance piece and it was hard as hell to <laughs> put onto a canvas and duplicate that. The hair was the most hardest part, but that was actually to incorporate the fact that women are already speaking about their faith um, vibrantly um, within the community, within the world. And who are we to silence them when they're very empowered to do that and they do so well. Um, a lot of times probably do it better than men. <laughs> but the fact of Mary Magdalene was to uh, show that she's already doing something, but also the fact of feminism. Because say if you yourself walk into a group of men and you're the only one that's seen Jesus and you're the only one that's like telling about this stuff, how would, how would you feel walking to a group of men being that? Or um, how would men see a woman portrayed at the time? So it's those dynamics and stuff too. So it touches on issues of women in church, feminism, um, all that stuff. So I just wanted to incorporate spoken word coming from her point of view of writing a letter saying, dear church, I am not this person that you thought I, would, I was. I had actually seen this dude coming out of the tomb. So whatever. <laughs> yeah. 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 So just stuff like that, just get people thinking, because um, that one did spike controversy a little bit, but I know that's going to, you know, stir some heads a little bit. Um, but that's what I like to do is not create shock value, but much more just, I want people to give thought to what I'm trying to say. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, it's still great art. Yeah, there are so many layers to your work. And at the same time, if you just look at it, it's brilliant. Like you, that's, that's, it's kind of like a choose your own adventure. Like, do you want to just look at it and see something pretty? Or do you want to like dig in deep and keep going? That's pretty cool. What there's, <laughs> so the ones I've done with Ninja Turtles, that was just an adventure. It was like my, <laughs> that was my kid moments. And I enjoyed it, especially during COVID. You saw the one I did in Michelangelo. Uh -huh. And I had to really say something on that one because Michelangelo is the youngest Ninja Turtle of all. So the fact that with COVID going on, it's easy to be an adult and forget about the fact that you still have a kid in you, like you yourself can't have a kid in you. So don't let that kid go. I think any adult should have that child in them because um, it's easy to just think about bills. It's easy to think about anything, nine to five jobs. But when you uh, have that kid inside you, it just makes you want to just go back a little bit, step back, like, and I'm still growing, but I'm still a child at the same time, we're a man child. Yeah, for sure. That's something that yeah. I love about the recurring theme of the Ninja Turtles, especially in your recent work, like, because yeah. I've been thinking, yeah, with COVID, everything seems so dangerous, like, so scary, so serious, so whatever, and I've, yeah, personally been reflecting on, like, 
I don't have, I don't like play anymore. I don't like, I don't engage with, like I, I made myself this summer, go to the playground that's by my house and just, nice. like, <laughs> right. so I, I love that you're encouraging folks to do that with your, with your work. Um, how often do you, how often do you create like art and like, do you, do you do art every day? Um, I mean, it's a real thing. I'm going to call that my art as well because I see it as that. So technically, yes, but as far as drawing and painting, you know, um, I actually got a girl coming up hopefully this Friday um, at a house and it's a lot of florals and animals. So you can tell I'm pretty versatile in what I can do, which is great because it shows people that, yeah, I can do this too. So don't underestimate my, my gift. Um, but to answer your question, I don't every day. Should I? Yeah, I just don't want to continue to study it. <laughs> yeah, I'm really curious to as as to your process. Um, how do you go from concept to execution? Because you also you paint, but you also do like markers. What is your mm -hmm. voice? So the markers, actually, the Raphael piece that we saw, that was my first time using alcohol-based markers. I just wanted to experiment, and lo and behold, that came out badass. <laughs> so I just kept going with it. Um, as far as anything else, it was just sketchbook and really just getting some ideas. Sometimes it's premeditated of how I how I perceive it to be, um, and some stuff that you see in like uh, the one that's in the coffee scene of Fred Hampton. That was in a way premeditated. I came in the place. I had that all in the sketchbook, so that came out well. But um, a lot of times, the sketchbook is really good. Yeah. Do you keep a sketchbook with you at all times, just in case an idea comes to you? It's kept in the car right now, so a lot of times I don't touch it unless I'm working on a project and getting ready for commissions. Um, but it doesn't take me long to figure things out and do a lot of research. Yeah, that's brilliant. I. I want to, well, whenever we can, when COVID isn't, you know, preventing right. us, I want to come and like do art with you. Like we should, we should do a like step one to finish. I like that. Yeah. How did you get, sorry. Oh, you I was looking at how, did, how you got the mural um, like commission coming up. So she asked me back in August of doing a mural for them in their house because they just got a new house. And I said, I'll do it. Um, she sent me some stuff that was from Pinterest. And um, it's like, sweet. It'll be fun because it's nothing really serious. And uh, I like doing serious stuff. Don't get me wrong. Um, you've seen it already, but I like doing things that I don't have to really think much about. Um, so in my mind right now, I, like, I kind of know what it's going to look like. but. Also, there's going to be a, be a bit of freestyling in it too, because I'm looking at three references that she sent me and just mixing it all together. So it's not going to be crazy hard or anything. It's just, to me, it's going to be much more restful. Cool. Not have to stress about it. Yeah. And you, you mentioned that roasting is your art right now as well. So how did you get into, into roasting? Roasting started when I was in Starbucks, actually, believe it or not. This uh, coffee master pursuing that, and I just started getting uh, nerdy with learning <laughs> coffee all together. Because I mean, at the end of the day, Starbucks is still a coffee shop. We just give it a bad rep because we don't see it what they're already doing in every single state or worldwide. Um, that's a whole other story. So, <laughs> um, roasting started with Starbucks, as far as learning out and just reading and reading and reading, um, trying to retain what I can, and then. Two years ago, I started shadowing methodical for just a little bit in Leopard Forest. And Leopard Forest is actually the ones that I started out with as far as coffee all together. 2008, nothing was planned. I did not plan on being a barista. I was planning on roasting coffee. It just started to grow more. And it's a whole other world. I just going to an SCAA at the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I started shadowing those two and then I met John at the time he was co-owner with Greg of Bridge City and he took me under his wing 2018 late summer 2018 
had to start doing some mobile pop-up shops um, early late spring late spring may 5th 2018 is when i started with Bridge city during that summer of 2018 i started roasting coffee um showing me the basics of what to look out for um different temperatures and then i started practicing myself and um he recently well not recently but he left last year late last year and that's where i became coffee roaster of bridge city and that was pretty abrupt but um it's been a really interesting ride of learning the science behind it because growing up as a student care for science um, did well in the classes sometimes but it's just it's hard to retain so the more i practice the more it's like it's much more making sense but now with teaching it it's i'm trying to simplify it because it really is like cooking beans in a big drum that's all it is and it's like the same way you put chicken on the skillet or steaks on the grill same thing applies it's just different different chemistry different chemistry sets pretty much <laughs> so i'm continuing learning i haven't i don't call myself a master roaster or anything like that what people will say because i don't believe you master anything you just keep grinding and keep um, growing and learning more and i mean there's people out there that are way better than me and i'm just going to keep myself humble like yeah cool I just roast coffee and I enjoy it. It's my way of speaking my language to others. Um, yeah. <laughs> nice. Do you have a mission statement for your for your roasting? Uh, that'd be nice. Um, <laughs> I don't, but I think with everything going on, you spoke to Maurice, AKA Coffee Black. Um, you spoke to a lot, of, a lot of people of color. And I think I'm just part of that. I'm part of that. So it's like my hands are already in the soil and I just get to be part of that. But being here in Greenville, South Carolina, so um, being what I know is the only coffee roaster in the city and probably in the state, um, that's, that's an honor, but also I can't come out with a big blow horn and say, look at me, I'm coffee roasting and I'm black. No, it's much more of just like art. It's me presenting my craft, my language to you. And if you're interested, we'll talk more about that. But until then, it's me just continue to do what I do, let people see that, that I enjoy what I do. Um, it's like Jackie Robinson, you know, being just a baseball player and he's black, but you know, he's got the goods, so he's going to swing home runs. So what I do is just make excellent coffee and let people see that, yeah, there's a dude back there, coffee roasting, and he's black. That's really cool. That's something you don't usually see. Yeah. Does that ever feel, do you feel isolated or like lonely? In no. Uh, far as roasting, like here, yeah, it's, I mean, I'm part of a family here um, in Greenville, far as the other coffee roasters, but far as it's like me doing what I do with the skin tone, and yeah, it's that, but I really don't think about it that much. Um, I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing at the end of the day. Thing. Yeah, just doing my thing. Yeah, that's awesome. How, uh, do you have goals and aspirations for your roasting? I mean, like you said, you're trying to potentially build, you're working on building a, a team, but right now yeah. you're by yourself. Um, my boy Kyle, who works here, he's a dropping manager here at Red City. Um, I'm teaching him to roast um, slowly. Uh, he's getting ready to be a poppy. So um, he's married and he's just got a lot in his plate already. So I just don't want to overwhelm his stuff because roasting is, can be overwhelming if you're taking so much in one day or two days. So I'm not going to do that to him. Um, I am slowly building a team but it's just, there's a lot to take in. And I'm just trying to develop, show that the basic main important stuff of roasting, not just the in between the cracks, because there's so much more to it, I can say. Yeah, for sure. I feel like yeah. that's unfortunately sometimes what happens when, when new roasters come in, there's a lack of, of education. So that's awesome that you're actually yeah. thinking about investing the time and creating the structure to to convey all of the stuff, not just push this button and it's fine. It is, it is. Um, and also I, I want to earn a title head coffee roaster because I am a coffee roaster here or the coffee roaster here. And 
Bridge City. I'm just going to brag on Bridge City. It's, I think, the one of the best coffee shops I've ever been in because of our owner, because of our boss, because of our friend and brother, Greg. He is a coach, a life coach, not just the owner of Bridge City. So he is helping us develop skills for lifelong things. Like for me, I'm pursuing coffee as a career. This is where I am. And I want to stay here as long as I can. But also, he's awakened things in me that I struggle with. with. And that's one of them is being a leader because I grew up just being a follower. And it's being, um, it's being engaging. It's being uh, honest. I mean, you know what leadership looks like. You know what it is. I'm sure you got influences in your life that helps you become a better leader, especially when you're doing, you're doing this whole magazine. You probably have a team where it's just doing it by yourself, but you are leading. So with me, I just, I'm just i still learning to lead in that way. And, um, Steer the ship right, being a coffee roaster, learning inventory, learning relationships with farmers, all this other stuff. Again, it's all over the world, it's just a lot to take in. I can only do it one day at a time. Okay. Well, it sounds like that's a similar, like becoming a leader, same as what you said about becoming a roaster or becoming an artist, is yep. you're never going to be like the best. You're never going to be at the top. You just have to keep learning, keep growing, keep doing, and yep. hopefully it'll all. Hopefully, hopefully you'll be willing to uh, engage with it and and join. Yeah, definitely. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for today. I'm thankful for you talking to me about this stuff. It's, it's a it's a lot to share, but <laughs> I'm only trying to do so much, share so much I can. Yeah. No. Well. Yeah. I'm I'm glad that you were able and willing to come on with me because yeah, we've come, emailed how many times and Instagram <laughs> a lot. Talk talked. Um, that's something that I find, you know, with the zine that is both really cool and also kind of sucks is that I interact with so many people, but then I don't get to, I don't often get to like sit down face to face. So I wanted to sit down face to face and talk to you about, about your art, about your roasting. Um, so how, how can people find your art? Yeah. Um, right now, it's Seabrook84, S-E-A-B-R-O-O-K is my middle name. Um, some of my dad and I have, but Seabrook84 um, on Instagram. And that's the only place I have right now. Um, I'm hoping to build a website again sometime soon, along with the business cards and such. So I'm kind of low-key, but a lot of the stuff that you already seen has sold. A lot of it was commissions. But um, I have not put an original out in a while. Um, so I still I still sell from there and people can DM me at the same time. Cool. If people want to find you Seabrook84 on Instagram, they can yep. buy your buy your pieces on there if they're not already sold. Um, yep. I think you have in the description of each one, like if it is for sale. Sold. Yeah. It doesn't be a price or a sold either way. Yeah. Try to keep my business simplistic because <laughs> Art should not be hard to buy, but at the same time, I, this is a rule I follow for myself when it comes to art. So one is that um, I try to keep the price affordable because I know it's like to buy art and it's really hella expensive. I know as well people try to make a living off it, you know, granted. But also I want to make sure that if it's still sold at a terrible price that I'm still providing excellent quality and not, you know, I want to give like a varsity style painting instead of JD. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Well, your quality is top notch up there. And yeah, just looking yeah. At, at the things on your Instagram, you make big pieces. Can yeah, I some are 30 by 40. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, like the Ninja Turtles was on like either 11 by 14 or 18 by 20 drawing paper. Um, yeah, some sketches will be like for my sketchbook with just a big drawing pad, and then canvas is very sometimes it's really big. Um, I haven't done like life size stuff unless it's a mural, but um, yeah, it's, it's fun. I like doing big, but sometimes it's challenging just to do the small ones too. Yeah. So, yeah. so if people want to like commission you to to make different pieces should they just instagram you yep. 
yeah, it's been working a lot. And it's, again, it's simple. I'm not trying to make anything complicated for people because it makes it easier for people to come to me and it's, hey, can you do this for me? Yeah, sure, I'll give you a price. Um, I have a little formula that I pulled from somebody else a long time ago and it works for me. Um, I don't keep track of materials. I don't keep track of time. I get lost in all that stuff and I'm focused on the picture. <laughs> uh, the one you saw of Donkey Kong, that was, that was uh, Alex Medina, who's um, known in the coffee world, um, who's here in Greenville, South Carolina. He hooked me up with uh, Jeremy, who owns the arcade place. And then, like, hey, can you do three panels of Donkey Kong for me? I'm like, yes. <laughs> so yes, yes. And all of that was not painted. None of that was painted. That was all the markers that you mentioned. Uh, the three panel? Yeah, Donkey Just Kong. That was all a marker. Yeah. That was all the alcohol based markers. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> what made you decide to do it in, in markers rather than? Uh, it'd take too long. It'd just be like, <laughs> I don't have the right colors. I'm not doing this in oil because I just, that one picture you saw the dude playing guitar, I came just from that to doing Donkey Kong. So it's like, I just did a serious piece and it got so much recognition. And that was a teachable moment for me um, to doing something very kid like Donkey Kong. Like, man, this is relaxing. Yeah. This. <laughs> well, and that's, I think that's the cool thing too about that piece is that, cause I didn't actually like notice it was in marker until I, I'm, I'm looking at it now. I have it pulled up. Um, yeah. It being Donkey Kong, it being at an arcade place, like it, and you just saying that you like to recall to the childhood, whatever, like it being in yeah. marker it just makes so much sense on yeah. like recalling to childhood level. Mm -hmm. Went from adult moment with Gregorian oils to markers, and it was so much fun, so much fun. I would do it again too. Yeah. That was only part one. He wants me to do a graffiti mural for him too, so that's gonna be fun. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, your style ha definitely calls to like graffiti and hip hop uh, aesthetics. Mm -hmm. And that. then the one piece I did of Chris, the one playing guitar, that was definitely I've been told it looks like Van Gogh from a mom. Um, Somebody thought it was a Dutch painting. It's like, wow, because it was very, some people were very shocked about that piece. And that goes back to what I was sharing with you earlier. It's just, you know, I don't want to be underestimated, but I can do this stuff. I did get a degree, two degrees. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, more versatile. <laughs> you're more versatile than, uh, than anybody could imagine. It's fun. It's fun. That's awesome. Cool. Well, exactly. I don't want to keep you uh, keep you too long. I'm sure you have to get back to your orders, huh? Yeah, it's not. It's really not much. Um, this is much more my my tranquil zone, where it's like I can just throw on some music and just knock out orders and make deliveries. So I got my various roles here that I'm still developing more into. Nice. Great. Well, cool. Um, if you want me to send you some coffee, just to say thank you, I can. If you want to shoot me your address through Instagram. I mean, let yeah. me know what your <laughs> let me know what your taste is. That way, I know like what to send you. I want to send you like, hey, here's some coffee. Have at it. <laughs> well, thank you. Do you have a really good decaf? I'm always looking for good decaf. Our decaf is the shit. Yeah. And I play around with our decaf. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that because I'm yeah I'm I've been drinking more and more decaf lately because you know with the world being what it is, I don't need more <laughs> caffeine messing with the anxiety and everything right um we have one called decaf so primavera and it's a swiss water decaf process so i can send some of you send some of that to you yeah i would love that i'll send you the address that would be so thank you thank you so much yeah, no problem okay. um, is there anything else you want to tell like say to the like youtube people who might be watching this honestly i don't right now i mean I'm just trying to stay humble it's like i'm just doing what I'm doing and I'm enjoying it and it grows more and more. Yeah, fantastic. Cool, well, thank you so much for, for having time to connect with me today on Zoom. Um, we'll be in touch. The next zine will be coming up. So if you have anything else that you want to put in there, send it my way. Always, always happy to have your work in the zine. Be glad to. I can actually send you one of Chadwick Boseman. Um, yes. I'll send you that one. Yeah. And the poem too, of course. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Cool. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, thank you. Have a good rest of your day and we'll chat soon. Hope you're the same. Bye.